Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Two people found dead in Kitsiton, St. Andrew, identified. The police have identified the two people whose bodies were discovered in Kitsiton, St. Catherine. Dead are Georgia Blunt and Will Fuller, both water vendors and farmers of Bendon District in Kitsiton. They were reported missing by relatives. Head of the St. Catherine North Police, Senior Superintendent Howard Chambers, told reporters that the bodies were found in the Naysborough Grove community at about 9.45 a.m. Noting that no motive has been established for the double murder, SSP Chambers is urging persons with information that can assist the police in their investigation to contact them. Uh, they were reported missing on Sunday by a family member that said that they have been trying to get in touch with them from Saturday evening and haven't getting haven't known the phone calls weren't answered. So they were reported missing Sunday morning. Uh, search uh, began from yesterday morning. Uh, didn't find them. Search suspended and continuing to this morning. And so the bodies were discovered in the same in, uh, Kisitone community, but more specifically in the Nasbury Grove uh, area in Bushes. The investigation is, is ongoing. Presently, as we speak, the investigators are in the community and they, they see scene also come in the area and try to you know, get some information to, to, to better direct them. I'm asking the community, please, if they have any information, you know, you know the Spanish Town Station number, call the number 9842305. Also, you have the investigators that will be there on a daily basis. Please pass on the information to them because uh, I think this is something um, alarming for that particular community of Kisitona. They don't have those type of things happening there. And so we want to resolve this one as soon as possible. And we are depending on the citizens to you know, collaborate with the police personnel so that we can uh, bring a closure to this one in finding the culprits. Two shot and killed off Maxfield Avenue. The St. Andrew South Police were processing the scene of a double murder on Burkwood off Maxfield Avenue. The incident reported it happened sometime after 10 o'clock. Reporters understand that the victims, two males, were shot while sitting in a black Nissan Sylphie motor car. Edith Dalton James students shot in neck while heading to school. A 16-year-old Edith Dalton James student was shot in his neck while on his way to school on Monday morning. According to College Minto, Zone Commander for the Duaney Park Police Station, the student is now recovering. Sometime at about 10.30 a.m., the student was on his way to school when an explosion was heard and he felt a burning sensation and subsequently recognized that he was hit in the back of his neck, meant to tell reporters outside the St. Andrew Bay School. He added, we are happy he is alive and that he is now in a state of recovery. It is a very unfortunate situation that our students who are on their way to or from school can be meted out with this form of incident. As such, he is employing residents who may have information on the incident to share it with the Duane Park Police Station. Our call 119 adding that the person responsible must be brought to justice. He was able to run to school where assistance was given and he was then later taken to seek medical attention. His condition is stable at this time and we continue to appeal to the residents. Those who may have seen or heard anything to report it to the Duaney Park Police Station, 119 or the nearest police station, Minto stated. Body set on fire in Chinese Cemetery Firefighters were called to the Chinese Cemetery on Walton Park Road in St. Andrew Monday afternoon after a body was seen ablaze. The man was still unidentified up to press time police reported. Reports are that around 5.15 p.m., Residents saw what appeared to be a body on fire and summoned the police. Upon arrival, lawmen called the fire brigade. A unit from the Trenchtown Fire Station extinguished the blaze. The body was later removed to the morgue. Alleged drug smuggler heads back to court April 11. A man allegedly caught with ganja and cocaine at the Sangsu International Airport in St. James will return to court on April 11 when it is expected that his lawyer would have been brief on the details of the case. At a previous appearance before the St. James Parish Court, the newer model pleaded not guilty to charges of possession, dealing in and taking steps to export ganja and cocaine. When the case was again called upon Monday, 
the court was told that full disclosure had not been made to the defense counsel. Presiding parish judge Sasha Marie Simit Ashley set the case for mention eight days later to allow for disclosure of one more statement. Mondo's bail was extended. According to court's record on January 11, 2021, officers intercepted Mondo's vehicle at the International Airport. The vehicle was searched and was discovered to have two black bags containing more than 40 pounds of green vegetable matter resembling ganja and 0.65 ounces of a white powder substance resembling cocaine. When caught, Mondo reported said to the officer, I should have looked in the bag before taking it up. He was subsequently arrested and charged. UK is to take legal action on behalf of security guards being victimized or refusal to sign new employment contracts. The Union of Clerical Administrative and Supervisory Employees UK has retained the services of an attorney amid reports that several security guards are being victimized due to their decision to not sign new employment contracts. Effective Saturday, April 1, guards are to be regarded as employees, not contract workers. However, Several guards are not pleased with some of the terms of the new employment contracts offered by security companies and have refused to sign. The guards say the company warned that failure to sign the new contracts would result in them not being allowed to work. President of UK's Vincent Morrison says a steer committee has been established to deal with the matter and the union will be taking legal action where necessary. The guards remain adamant that they are not signing the contract and we agree with them 100%. They decided not to sign because the agreement or the new contract is not in their favor, right? So they have, those who met at my office yesterday have been very strident, very adamant that they're not signing. Now with respect to those persons who they are victimizing, they are asking to stand on the turn of four and several have gotten several calls. We have put in place a steering committee. We have retained the service of an attorney at law, and uh, we are collecting the information. We are putting all the information. All those who have been affected are asked to get in touch with our office so that the lawyers, our lawyers, can take whatever action deemed necessary to protect the rights of those workers. Decomposing body of teen found in Hanover. 18-year-old Tricia Hall went missing four times. However, on Sunday morning when her brother discovered she was not home, he never anticipated that her decomposed body would be her identifying mark. Eight days after the mother of a baby girl went missing, she was found in a cane piece near her home in Marchtown, Kilamark, Hanover. And owing to the advanced stage of decomposition, the police were unable to say how she died. Mino come to if he says she did, said Hall's mom, Safa Stewart, who is six months pregnant and had to be revived twice on the scene of the gruesome find. According to her, she spoke with Hall last Saturday night about 9 o'clock before retiring to bed. On Sunday morning, she received a call at approximately 7 from her son, expressing concern that his sister did not return home. Shocked by the sight of her niece, Hall's aunt Arlene Stewart did not mince her word sending a clear message to those she believed may have been responsible for the death. Calling down the wrath of God and vengeance, Arlene said, The person who has shed her blood, might that person's blood be shed, because that is the word of Almighty God. You shed blood, and God says, Your blood will be shed also, she cried, stating that many nights she has watched television and seen other families reeling from the pain of losing their loved ones to crime in Jamaica, but never thought it would reach her doorstep. Hall's mother said that she made a report to the police on Sunday. However, police records show that a report was made on Wednesday. The police reported they conducted an investigation and a search party was launched. On Friday afternoon, about 2 o'clock, the body was discovered behind a home in the community. Although we carried out an extensive search of the area on Wednesday and Thursday, because of the large vegetation, we did not find her. Inspector Marvin Hogg, sub-officer in charge of Green Island Police Station, stated. The police inspector said their investigations were assisted by residents and had it not been for them, they probably would not have located the body so quickly. Investigation is at a delicate stage. We expect a breakthrough later on, said Hogg. This is the third murder in Hanover in three days. 
and despite the challenges the sub-officer said, he and his team remain committed. The fear of crime is affecting everyone, but we're doing our best in keeping things under control. Nevertheless, we expect citizens to play their part in supplying the police with necessary information about criminal and criminal activities in the area so we can respond as best as possible, he urged. With the escalation of murders in the parish, Hanover businessman Brian Chambers, while on the scene, expressed concerns that things are getting out of hand. However, he was quick to posit that the police could not do it alone. It is not something that one set of persons can do anything about, he stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.